Uh, ladies and gentlemen, right now for our panel discussion on how AI will shift customer experience to the next level, wherein one technology trend that has caught everyone's attention in recent years is the way AI is evolving. Its disrupting nature has given it an enormous potential with countless, app, app, countless applications. Among the many possibilities that AI promises, CX seems to be completely overhauled. While this panel discussion uh, would uh, cover why chatbots and AI have the potential to transform CX provision for the better, how AI and data analytics improve customer experience, how AI ML RPA applied to improve customer experience, addressability wherein the best practices for offline online integration, data monetization, AI techniques, understanding where AI part solutions will make the greatest impact on your customer experience and business bottom line, and AI will have the most transformative impact on CX. Well, our panelists uh, who are joining us is first up, uh, Siafri Bahar, VP Data Science, uh, Gojek, Indonesia. Well, Siafri is driven by passion to translate complex business questions to, un to quantifiable solutions by leveraging various analytical tools and quantitative techniques tailored to the problems. Well, he's somebody who's got a strong, uh, uh, domain knowledge on financial risk management and end-to-end -end modeling spectrum. Well, Siafri runs a day job as the VP of the data science at Kojak. Well, also we're joined by Sergey uh, Kizyan, uh, the CTO in Tetex Inc. Uh, Ukraine. Well, Sergey is a CTO with the Intetix Inc. and he's also an advocate of tech innovation and dives into all details of tech trends. Mr. Kizyan is the author of the People-Oriented Management book as well, and he's listed amongst the top authors on Code Project. We're also joined by Pranjal Mishra, the Customer Claims Experience Alliance Indonesia. Well, Pranjal, with over 18 years of experience in life and health insurance operations and lean business process management, he's somebody who's instrumental in driving customer-centric processes, re-engineering, robotics process automation and digitization. We're also joined by our panelists, Sri Safatri, uh, the project director of the CX Transformation Telecom uh, Indonesia. Well, Sri uh, Safatri is uh, somebody who possesses over 20 years of experience in telecommunications, media and technology with broad local and global experience in managed services, cloud IP planning, marketing, project management of partnership and alliance. Also joining us as our panelists is Vinny Tal Singh Rabankos, the Information Technology Director, Coca-Cola Beverages, Philippines. Well, Vinny is currently working as a Technology Director at the Coca-Cola Beverages, and she's somebody who's fueled by enthusiasm, enjoys collaboration, and loves technology. And also, ladies and gentlemen, the entire panel discussion is going to be moderated by Andy Shun, the Regional Director, VP Technology in Innovation Prudential Corporation in, uh, Insurance Asia Computer Societies, Hong Kong. Well, Andy is leading AI pioneer and a global visionary with over three decades of innovation experience in the range of industries, including insurance, finance, health, transportation, education, and government. Well, ladies and gentlemen, with this, uh, I now pass it on the able hands of Andy to take it forward with his panel today. Thank you once again to all our panelists for joining us. Over to you, Andy. Thank you so much for the introduction, uh, Babana. And welcome to our panel discussion on how AI will shift customer experience to the next uh, level. We have an amazing lineup of elite panel members with very diverse uh, background in food and beverages, telco, insurance, transportation, and IT industries. Um, before we invite the panel members to speak, let me provide a backdrop for our discussion. Um, as, as everyone knows, COVID-19 uh, pandemic has forever changed the retail landscape significantly and possibly for a long run. Online shopping has replaced brick and mortar storefronts. In a recent study, it is estimated that increase in online shopping amounts to over 100 billion US dollars since COVID-19. Um, that's amazing amount of uh, increase. With most activities gone online, uh, digital customer experience is more important than ever before. And many companies are looking towards AI to shift uh, customer experience to the next level. A strong digital presence is crucial to business success. Companies are all rushing to digitize themselves and embark on digital transformation projects. AI, machine learning, and data analytics all play very important roles in digital transformation efforts to help better understand customer needs. 
as well as improving uh, customer experience with things like AI hyper-personalization, AI chatbot customer servicing, automated processing with RPA, et cetera. So we'll talk more about this uh, in, in our discussion. With COVID-19, um, personal health is top of everyone's priority list. You know, many companies are also putting more attention on cus uh, consumer health. For example, Prudential, you know, where I work, has an all-in-one AI app called Pulse by Prudential. It helps customers stay healthier with AI health check, AI chatbot doctors, telemedicine, e-prescription, e-pharmacy, and much more. So, you know, AI has been playing a major role in improving customer experience on, 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 uh, on our side. Uh, the app has already been down over 12 million times since COVID-19, just to show how, how, how concerned people are about health. It is available in uh, four, uh, 13 countries, including Indonesia as well. Well, with so many changes in consumer behavior and technology used since COVID-19, it is interesting to learn from our panel how their companies have been coping, uh, especially in the area of customer experience uh, and what words of advice they might have. So maybe to start, may I ask each panel members to briefly introduce uh, yourself as well as uh, what, what you do particularly around the customer experience area and AI. So let's start with uh, Sarfi, um from Gojek. You, you want to uh, say a few words? Sure. Hi. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, it's nice to be here uh, together with this esteemed panelist. So uh, yeah, I'm Safri. So I've actually joined Gojek for about two years now. A strong background in uh, financial industries, um, in modeling particularly. So I think those are particular areas that I'm uh, looking to contribute to the conversation as well. Um, as for Gojek itself, although uh, my specialization in data science, but I overlook the analytic and science um, divisions actually for a couple of portfolios, basically. So um, uh, probably some of you have heard already the product. Um, so I oversee entertainment, uh, to the platform, grocery, logistic and transportations, uh, and a couple of other uh, like customer platform, for example. So a couple of, of these, um, I, would, I would call it like a, a smaller businesses, but doesn't mean it's not important, but it's smaller businesses. And I think especially in these areas and domains, there are a lot of initiatives that we currently do to uh, improve, like using analytic and science basically to improve the customer experience. So um, yeah, that, that's pretty much what I, what I do currently. So I oversee people strategy, technological investment, uh, many other uh, aspects of, of it. Yeah. Thank you so much. Sounds very exciting, interesting. We'll talk uh, a bit more uh, in, the, in, in the following question. Uh, how about uh, Sergey? You want to say a bit about yourself and what you do? Yeah. Hi. Good morning, everyone. Uh, as well, uh, happy to participate in this great event. I'm uh, Sergey. I'm a chief technical officer in a global company called Intetix. Uh, Intetix is doing uh, IT services, software development services for dozens or hundreds of clients in the world. Uh, we have many projects, uh, not only in AI area, but uh, AI, machine learning and data science is one of our major directions. So uh, we have not only personal case study, basically we don't have personal case study. We have many, many case studies related to our clients. So definitely we have now a uh, big picture of what is happening in this area, and I'll be happy to discuss it in this panel. Okay, thank you so much, Sergey. Uh, Pranja, uh, can I uh, ask you to say a few words? Hi, good morning, everyone. Uh, so I am Pranjal Mishra uh, from Alliance Life Indonesia. I'm head of uh, customer claim experience and driving uh, our automation in process and as well as for operation transformation. So basically, uh, uh, the in insurance business obviously is data driven insurance business, correct? So that's how uh, it's complementary when we discuss about AI and machine learning, specifically in terms of underwriting, where we we are discussing now about uh, predictive underwriting. Uh, we are working on the claim side, where the fraudulent claim is one of the major challenge for all the insurance company. So how we can predict these claims pattern, how we can identify the fraudulent activities and try to have some prevention uh, towards us. I also have a huge experience into RPA. So uh, we have implemented few RPA solutions in our organization to, to make it things uh, move faster. Super great. Uh, we, we have a lot in common uh, uh, being in the insurance industry. So we have a bit of common in, in, in what we share. 
Uh, Sri, uh, may I uh, uh, ask you to say a few words as well? Hi, I'm Sri Safitri. I'm the Deputy Executive Vice President of Customer Experience and Digitization of Telecom Indonesia. So I'm responsible for uh, Telecom Group overall customer experience design and implementation. So I deal with uh, a lot of uh, uh, data and analytics of the whole group in terms of customer experience and also working with them in order to leverage the latest technology, including AI, RPA, and machine learning. Okay. Wonderful. Uh, how about you, Winnie? Uh, can you share a few words as well? Hi, Andy. Hi, everyone. Nice to be here. So I am the CIO for Coca-Cola Beverages Philippines. And um, we use uh, AI um, analytics and uh, RPA in most of our operations. We employ about 16,000 employees and uh, we have a total of 10,000 wholesalers in the country where we see growth in terms of volume and in terms of transformation. We also make sure that our millions of uh, consumers and one million of uh, small mom and pops actually are part of our digital transformation. So in, th in those areas, a lot of work needs to be done as well in the analytics, AI, and RPA. Very challenging indeed. Okay, thank you so much. Um, well, by the way, for the audience, please feel free to type in questions as we go. We'll take some questions uh, as we go through the panel. Okay, my first question is, you know, with COVID-19, consumer behavior have changed with strong emphasis on, on digital interactions. Uh, did this bring new challenges in terms of customer experience and how has your priorities changed with, uh, with COVID-19, if any? Um, sorry, sorry uh, maybe we'll start with you. Sure, yep. So, so definitely, I think um, it's, it's not a secret that COVID-19 especially has brought, um, I would call it like a systematic disruptions to the, to the, to the business overall. I think almost no uh, domains which are not affected by COVID-19. And that's um, like, especially Gojek's not an exception, right? Especially what we've found out is that we've seen a shift in customer behaviors, basically. And also, we also uh, seen shift in what really uh, customer values. And that actually did us to change the strategy. Uh, just to give an example, right? For for example, um, although what we've seen that in special on the transportation side of things, especially go right, because of the uh, mobility restrictions that we have in the nation, for example, that so we see some decrease in terms of uh, number of orders. But on the other hand, what we see, um, uh, particularly from the data, is that we we've, we've managed to see some huge improvement in terms of grocery transactions, right? So uh, I think it's pretty public already that um, uh, in terms of the grocery business, we see an improvement of 5X actually in terms of number of transactions. Uh, what we also found out, it's also aligned with the uh, basically disruption that happening in the e-commerce as well is that we see, especially on the logistic arm as well, we see also like improvement in number of transactions, right? And the more we look into the data, the more we know that we uh, also like this also guide us in terms of um, uh, uh, basically deciding on the strategy. I think one thing that we realize is that the market is a very volatile and in order to basically deal with the volatile world, we need a very scalable ways to react towards customer preference as well, which is the reason why one of the company visions, our vision is, and I think we do it already uh, in, some of, um, uh, in some of the domains that we have at Gojek is that we wanna be able to react very quickly by providing a, a hyper personalization for our customers, right? The main use cases that we can see um, at Gojek itself uh, uh, starting from search, starting from food recommendation, for example, starting by providing the, 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 the grocery, like a good uh, customer experience for grocery, right? Imagine for me, for example, if I identify a certain customer that has some preference to our certain brands, meaning that if, if they search for soap, the immediately like the preferred brand will actually come up first instead of, so it's, it's really personalized to, to that level. Um, so those are just one thing. Um, we've also recently also implemented the smart reply for our chat, right? Which can actually systematically uh, differentiate the gender as such. The greetings becomes more personalized according to the gender as well by leveraging NLP technologies. Um, and, and it's actually very interesting to see, right? Um, uh, just, just as an example of how also this changed our strategy in terms of uh, business optimization. We've seen, for example, that um, it used to be that we optimize 
a lot for the uh, efficiency in terms of our routing system for logistics, for example. But the more here we found out that SLA becomes more and more important for the customer, for example. And I think in all design principles of all the AI technology that we implement within Gojek, we want it to be multi-objective, meaning that we're able to kind of shift what kind of objective that we want to implement this week versus next week, right? So I think those kind of level of personalization really change the way we think about how we use technology to really um, react to the changing market situation. It's all, and I think another thing as well that we um, are doing is that we are probably like we're basic customize all of those experience by configuration. So what AI enables us to do is that we are able to design an, um, a very scalable machine learning system where businesses can actually manage their business is using configuration only by just logging into business portal and change the business method that they want to optimize. Right. Yeah. That's from my side. Thank you. Thank you so much. This is uh, it's interesting. I think there's a lot of similarity across different industries. You know, I heard you talk about using AI for hyper personalization. I, uh, you know, we do that in, in insurance industry as well. When they use that, when people use the app, obviously we, we know their gender, we know their age, uh, and uh, what their what their needs are in their life today. So that hyper personalization, I think, is something that's super important. And something that uh, consumers would, would really want in terms of the customer experience. Obviously, you know, uh, getting the same giving the same message to everyone in the world, uh, uh, the, it, it, it doesn't work anymore. It has to be you know tailored to just the specific needs and interests of individuals. Uh, Sergey, uh, maybe I'll uh, have you say a few words on on how how has uh, COVID nineteen changed uh, your your business. Mm -hmm. So uh, what I can share here is that uh, from my perspective, COVID nineteen just uh, speed up things that uh, had to happen in any case. Uh, clients and uh, customers they were shifting to digital uh, slowly but constantly and more and more people uh, were using uh, technologies and uh, and stuff to uh, and IT, IT things to buy something so uh, it was covid-19 was kind of revolution uh, for those who were just thinking to to shift to to digital and uh, covid just uh, speed up this process and i can say that uh, uh, we receive it uh, during uh, pandemic. We receive it uh, uh, much more requests from our clients to implement uh, for them uh, a new customer experience to add more uh, smart things there, like uh, things you mentioned it, uh, about identification, about uh, personalization uh, and stuff. And I can say that uh, it was successfully implemented by us. Uh, we made uh, many clients happy. But I want to mention also kind of opposite effect from this. Many, many companies, they started to use uh, uh, machine learning, artificial intelligence and other technologies to, to make customer experience better. But they made it worse. Because How's of that? Wrong, because <laughs> because of wrong implementation, because of wrong implementation, because of uh, bad technologies use, they made their uh, customer experience so robotic, so uh, okay. kind of not uh, losing the human touch. Yes. 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 Uh, uh, so their clients just connected, uh, started to type something. They realized that, for example, a chatbot uh, asks them or uh, does something really stupid or wrong. So they stopped interactions, and uh, we had to measure it to understand mm -hmm. why it happened and and improve. So we should be careful with technologies. I would say uh, when we implementing such things, because yeah, uh, totally, totally agree. Yes. Like any technology, has to be done right to to get its full benefits. Yes. And yes, yeah, I agree. You know, um, one of the main, as everyone know, one one of the main driver for digital transformation has been COVID nineteen, and some estimate that it has uh, it has fast forwarded uh, digital transformation by five to seven years. Uh, maybe some some of our panel members could share later on how many years you feel that COVID nineteen has accelerated your work. Uh, Praja, how, how does uh, uh, how does COVID nineteen uh, has has it impact your business as well? It's major time, really. So as <laughs> you really mentioned, correct the the way the transformation which we are driving, although 
in our organization or uh, specifically in the insurance industry, we had lots of tools as well as application which was being used by our agents. But uh, in this current situation, was it ha- what had happened? So earlier, the, the tools which we had or the sales process which supposed to happen for onboarding our new customers was uh, regulatory, correct? It's uh, driven by the regulator where customer and agent supposed to meet together, discuss together, understand because it's, it's, a, it's a product where we sell, correct? It's not the customer who choose and buy by himself. So it's, it's a push kind of product. So it is very much interaction required. And now in this current situation where we had all these lockdown restriction, we cannot meet with the agent uh, or customer cannot meet with the agent. Uh, all these things has think allow us to think uh, uh, something else, which was not being thought earlier. Uh, as you mentioned earlier, correct? We were driving transformation for quite a number of years, but during this short time, we thought uh, some something exceptional, which can drive uh, the customer experience. So we try to find a solution where how we can uh, have a sales uh, via non-face-to-face interaction. So although as per regulator, we need to have interaction between agent and customer, but how we make it uh, in terms of uh, uh, digitally. So, so those things have been triggered in, during this situation. We, we got some exception approvals or some uh, new regulation change from our regulator, which help allow us to think on this kind of solution where we can enable the video kind of sales activity. Uh, uh, we can record those interactions and then drive the customer experience. Obviously, in insurance at this point of time, specifically in Indonesia, the wet signature is must to have, correct? So although we have digital tool, then also the application f- uh, form need to be signed off by customer. So how to make these signature digitally and all those things driven a lot. Uh, to, to make uh, make our transformation journey, uh, journey completely transform the way we were thinking, the way we were doing earlier. And secondly, uh, because insurance, this is a long-term product, correct? So generally, if we have our applications also, customer most of the customer do not uh, download those applications. There are services which we offer as straight through processing, but generally customer prefer to uh, get these services done through their agents, correct? But now in this situation, all those things changed and customer realized the, the transaction which are available with our applications, with our uh, portals. These transactions have helped a lot to drive the centricity and the need which customer had at this point of time to drive uh, uh, the, the insurance need as well as the servicing need, whatever they had. So we have seen a huge spike in our digital transactions in nowadays. And uh, people also realize, correct? So without agent also they can do uh, the insurance transactions, they can buy insurance. So that has happened uh, quite a thing, uh, quite a lot of thing has happened during this time. Thank you, yes. Uh, I share the same same view uh, uh, for for our side as well. And, and it's a good point that you ma- mentioned uh, COVID-19 not only have driven digital transformation, but also drove customer adoption of, of digital technology uh, before people prefer face-to-face. Um, uh, now, now they they understand the value of of apps. You know, at, at Prudential, for example, and, and just like you know, just like Indonesia across the region, uh, because of regulatory requirements, uh, everything has to be face to face. The majority has to be face to face. But the you know, government's also fast to move. You know, they have relaxed uh, most of these requirements, and uh, now you know we have gone virtual in sales process, just like just like uh, you. Uh, we adopted new technologies like uh, very quickly, like e KYC, e documents, e signature, e payments, e everything. And now, you know, for Prudential, we have you know, 90% of our products can be so uh, virtually. So it's a major change from before, where practically, you know, very few uh, products can be so virtually. And 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 uh, just like just like you, uh, it's not just the customer facing, but you know, the the processes behind the scene is also you know leveraging AI. Um, you know, things like uh, automated underwriting, dynamic pricing, you know, automatic claims processing, and and then the AI fraud detection. So um, I think you know a lot of companies are leveraging AI to make the whole user or customer experience totally frictionless and seamless. And so, so it's a big value that it's bringing into uh, for for the customers uh, uh, more 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 uh, more user friendly and convenient. Uh, Sri, uh, maybe uh, maybe I'll ask you to share how has uh, COVID nineteen changed uh, 
Telecom Indonesia in terms of how they uh, how you interact with your customers. Uh, thank you, Andy. So uh, in telco, I think I can share that uh, we've learned that in COVID-19, it's not just uh, the behavior is not changed. I mean, like it's been changed before the COVID. So it's not because of the COVID it's been changed. So the COVID is just a uh, opportunity for an opportunity for us to improve our our customer experience because uh, if we learn from the 2008 and 2019 2009 financial crisis numbers shows uh, that CX laggard not only have significantly underperformed during the session times but have an, uh, also a much lower recovery and also uh, our research shows that. Uh, uh, three times higher returns for shareholders over 2007-2009 recession from customer experience uh, leaders. So with that in mind, we believe that we need to do and define our priorities. So it's not because of the driver, it's not because of the customer behavior change. The behavior will change after such a long time, maybe next year. But because of the customer already changed before that, so with this situation in the next normal, we define our uh, three priorities uh, in order to improve uh, and, and achieve uh, CX excellence in the post-pandemic era. So in the next normal, uh, we believe that winning companies will need to capitalize on opportunities to adapt uh, to uh, evolving customer behaviors, deliver short-term business success, and strengthen their long-term strategic position. So I can share about our three uh, uh, main initiatives. First is uh, what we call it uh, digital excellence. So in digital excellence, we have the short-term and long-term approach. The short-term is how we accelerate digital channel readiness to keep up with the rising demand. So we can, for example, we can expand uh, self-service and also uh, asynchronous chat functionalities and also how we embrace AI support in various forms. Uh, in terms of the long term, we would like to set uh, our program in expanding the proposition beyond connectivity to embrace new sets of needs. For example, we are adding a lot of digital services like OTT video, online cloud gaming, esports, and e-learning, e-health, and etc. that is possible to be done. And, and the second one uh, is how we develop uh, a contactless engagement. So in contactless engagement, in order to enable that, we need to uh, improve our uh, drive care backend automation to allow agents, for example, to focus on what matters. Uh, so free up agents from millennial tasks, uh, from a menial tasks like ticket management, order creation, data update, so that they can focus on helping uh, customers. So for this, we leverage our RPA. And the third initiative that we are doing in this pandemic is that showing how uh, that we care. So we connect with the customers and make investment in the data analytics so that how we can uh, launch personalized actions to limit customer burden in order for them to uh, free data or upgrades. And also we revise care staff KPIs and script to focus more in care, uh, in care and, uh, and empathy. So with this, uh, we clearly define, uh, immediately uh, define our short-term and also long-term long -term initiatives so that we can uh, refocus on customer experience and deliver experiences through leveraging AI to support not only, uh, not only uh, our customer, but also government and uh, society to overcome coronavirus because we are part of the state-owned enterprise in Indonesia. Thank you so much. I'm sure with everyone uh, staying home most of the time and online all the time, they're using up a lot of bandwidth as well. Uh, how about Winnie? How has that changed your business? Are people drinking more Coke because they're at, at home nowadays? Definitely, Andy. Yes. It, has, it has moved from the on-premise going to the home market. So yes. I think one of the, one of the key um, ideas that came out out of the two months transformation, which initially we were thinking like two years of transformation is like two worth two months of transformation. No? So at least in Coca-Cola, how we dealt with it was we found out that the customers wanted us everywhere. So in the beginning, they felt crippled. They felt that they were helpless, that they could not get everything that they wanted. And then after a few days, they were already demanding that all the consumer-based or FMCG companies be available in whatever device or whatever application that they need. One ultimate um, goal 
to reach really for the customers is to be also one is partnering with the digital giants. So the customers wanted that not only you are present, not only that you have a platform of your own, but you are capable of partnering with another digital giant that they have already on their device. So if they cannot pay you, if they cannot pay your services, through your own banking uh, option, through your own um, financial transaction option, they will have to pay through other means. So if you are not able to provide that means, then the customer will have to look elsewhere. So what we realized is we needed to be everywhere for the everything customer. No? So one thing we partnered with Lazada. In the past, we have always partnered with Lazada. But this time, uh, during the quarantine period, we've partnered with more than the shoppies of the world, online shoppies of the world, we, of, of, at least in the Philippine side, we also partnered with the fintech, with the financial institutions to make sure that wherever they pay, we are going to be available and that the deliveries of Coca-Cola will be available to them. On the internal side of things, we also have our internal customers, so to speak, you know? Our customers internal have become very demanding during the pandemic. So they not only require that you are present when they fix your computers or when you fix their computers, but they, only, but they also require that if you do that in three days in the past, you are able to do it in two hours. So that has pushed self-service tools from within to actually emanate and for us also to increase our service level agreement together with our managed service partners. We have also one thing that we implemented together with our truck drivers because um, not everyone probably know Coca-Cola also is a very big logistics company. We deliver our products to our customers and our consumers. So we made sure that um, AI-powered um, capability, at least for the trucks, are available so that we are able to immediately manage the need of our trucks, whether we need it now, how many trucks do we need, and how many trucks are not able to deliver to our customers, how many trucks can we send in so that uh, at least the delivery is fulfilled. So a lot of changes in just a matter of two months just because of COVID. Amazing, amazing amount of work you guys have done. And definitely tapping into all the different digital uh, ecosystem is very important. You have to reach out to your customers everywhere they, that they, they might be. Okay, let me, uh, let me switch to more specific. You know, AI provides a range of technologies. You know, obviously the most popular are chatbot, RPA, and then machine learning and data analytics. Uh, um, Let's let's explore. You know how, how your company may have leveraged some of these technologies, and, and maybe uh, are there some use case or lesson learned? Uh, like Sergey explained, you know you have to be you, you have to be careful how you launch this. You know, so so let's hear uh, if you have any you know best practices and and lessons learned to share with the audience. Um, who would like to start? Um, so, Saifri, yeah, you want you want to share some of your best practice in terms of leveraging uh, AI technology, what to avoid, what to do. Sure. Um, yeah, okay. I think I think maybe. Oh, sorry. Sorry, is this Safitri or Shafri? Safitri <laughs> <laughs> can go first. Bushri can go first. Yeah. Okay, Either. thank you. Uh, ladies so, first. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. Thanks. So. Uh, uh, there are many ways that we can leverage uh, technology, but uh, first of all, we need to bear in mind that it's not technology that is more important, but it's understanding customer pain. So uh, I can give you one example in terms of customer experience that we leverage. We leverage uh, uh, RPA. So for RPA, uh, first of all, we le learn from customer pain point that customer complain that our social media takes a long time. And then we realized that for that, what is long time? I mean, how many minutes that is considered long? We look at the data, the average is uh, 52 minutes. And then um, how can we reduce this 52 minutes? And then first of all, what we, do is, what we did was that uh, we uh, arranged the shift of customer so in social media agent, and then that can uh, reduce the average uh, handling time into 13 minutes. It's good, right? from 52 minutes into 13 minutes, but good is not uh, good enough. Uh, so, uh, because we have a reference in the benchmark that the best in class in handling social media is two minutes. And then what can we do in order to go to that? And then 
we realized that we need to reshift uh, the agent again um, by adjusting their their uh, 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 time to uh, break time, and then that can be reduced to four minutes. Four minutes is still better, a lot better than 52, but it's still not good enough because the best in class is two minutes. And then after that, we implement RPA. So by implementing RPA, robotic processing automation in the call center system that uh, take over human job into a robotic, we are, we are able to manage and reduce it into fr from four minutes into two minutes. But that's the last step. Why? Because if we immediately leverage technology, we will not be able to uh, squeeze it into, into uh, that low in terms of handling that. But uh, the, that's a good example. By that, customer will uh, deal uh, only with two minutes because of the process has been, has been replaced by, by, by the RPA. But that's a good example of how we implement technology. But there are other ways that uh, its technology is not always the best. For example, we try to implement AI chatbot also for call center. But because most of AI chatbot is using English language and then they don't understand Bahasa more and the library in the Bahasa is not comprehensive enough, that chatbot or that episode got the lowest NPS. Even though that we leverage artificial intelligence in the chatbot, but the result is not good enough. It's, not, it's even worse because that is the worst uh, part of the NPS that we got. So that's the thing that this is why we believe that the words is there. There is an art in artificial intelligence and art <laughs> means human. Yeah. So we, do, we need to think about that human is on top of the technology. So that's the thing that I would like to share in terms of how we have leveraged technology. Thank you. Thank you so much. I definitely agree. AI is, uh, is still quite a much uh, an art. You have to, uh, really have experienced in order to do it right. Sire-free, uh, you sure. have some, some best practice to share. Sure, yeah, I, th I think I'll, I'll probably comment uh, uh, two things. So first about the learnings implementing AI itself. And second thing, so I would like to highlight some uh, like some non-technological aspect of machine learning, for example, right? Which we also found to be very useful in understanding the customers as well. So I think first of all about the whole, um, some, some of the learnings, like indeed, like what you said, if you look at uh, implementing um, AI, or I would actually rather call it machine learning because it's, uh, AI is a little bit like uh, diluted at this moment. But like if we, when we basically implement machine learning um, at Gojek, there is one, um, uh, just to give an example in allocation engine, right? So there was a time where what we uh, basically, we started with a very single objective. Um, uh, as an example, suppose that you have an order, you can actually choose uh, to which driver you can actually allocate it. I think the simplest nice approach will be to allocate it to the closest drivers, right? So from customer experience perspective, that will be better because then the, the customers needs to kind of like wait um, less. But on the other hand, um, another perspective, another objective might be that uh, we would like to allocate it, although two drivers might uh, differ by a couple of hundred meters, but the fact that one of them, the, 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 the furthest one, actually has managed to complete 95% of uh, his orders, right? Maybe one can make a guess whether it's better actually to allocate it to that driver. So that's that's the nature of varying uh, objective that one can choose in order to optimize a, a system, right? And then what we've learned is that when we uh, use, for example, single objective, what we found out is that it, it, it over, over as, uh, optimized the single objective that can actually lead to bad experience, right? Just to give you an example, when we, uh, for example, implement a single objective of uh, historical completion, what it turned out to be is that um, we uh, like same drivers will get the same orders, the same combination of orders, right? Because historically, once you complete a food order, for example, then there is a high likelihood that you will also complete a food order. So basically there is a hyper optimized in terms of the set of drivers, which are kind of like getting the, the orders, right? Uh, and then we learn from that. And like what you say, it's a journey. Maybe what I want to emphasize from this, what I want to say is that actually journey, right? It, it requires a lot of iterative modes and learnings in order to be able to get to a state where um, your AI technology can actually augment humans in the decision-making instead of replacing humans as a decision-making. And I think augmentation is very important to highlight over here because um, essentially that's what my fundamental principle about AI itself, that it needs to be augment human in making decision uh, like, well, like my illustration before about the, the business, right? Business still have a control in terms of uh, changing the configuration in terms of proportion of customer experience versus order completions that they want to optimize. But, um, and then AI basically assists 
uh, that to to happen, right? So so that's number one. So those are just an example of a learning that we 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 basically learn through the journey. And second thing, there is actually also um, equally important use cases for using uh, I would call science science and analytics part of it in knowing the customers, right? Uh, just to give one example is the ideas of uh, multi-touch attributions, basically. Uh, the notion is that basically what, what is responsible for your conversion is not necessarily like one single attribution point, but it's it's actually a journey, right? And that's also what we found out in, if you look at the, if we map the customer journey, it actually requires a journey, uh, multiple touch point in order to be able to convert someone, right? And we use this knowledge by presenting it with the right uh, data uh, structure we're actually able to identify what those journeys are. So instead of like relying a lot on the first touch and last touch uh, attribution, we rely a lot on the, the whole journey. And then it enables us to identify what kind of journey that actually lead into uh, 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 either retention acquisition metric or retention metric, or even the, 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 the order transaction values, right? And we use this to algorithmically shift our customers from different aha moments basically, right? By, uh, I think what is also important to, Notice this is the notion of experimentation. I think at any particular time, we have around thousands of experimentation running to basically figure out what are the right levers to move uh, customers from one aha moment to different aha moments. So I think that's also one uh, use case of the recent advancement for, for this, yeah. Thank you so much. I can fully understand about your, your example uh, of scheduling, uh, allocating drivers, because that, you know I've been to Jakarta many times uh, the closest driver could actually take longest because of the way the roads are, are structured. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Very valid point, yeah. Correct, exactly. So basically the geometrically closest distance might not always be optimal. Yes. <laughs> uh, Winnie, uh, you have anything to share in terms of best practice? What, what we should do, what should we avoid in terms of using AI machine learning? Sure, 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 Andy. If I may just share, no, apart from the pandemic, at least earlier this year, and you would have already probably heard that we were hit and struck by strong typhoons in the past two weeks. So, um, so we are not just dealing with an occasion of a pandemic, but we're also dealing with Philippines being in a Pacific uh, ring of fire. So one of the AI uh, power enabled tool that we have is a people accounting software, which immediately after cert, probably sniffing through the internet, uh, that there would be calamities surrounding a specific region, automatically a notification is going to be sent to, uh, to all employees. And we have about 16,000 employees in the, in the country where we need to account every time a calamity is there. So one of the best practices and probably a good indication of a successful implementation. Initially, we did not have a good implementation of this, but what we did was to get the support of our leadership team and make sure that everyone is aware and on the vision and the mission of why we are doing this. We said at the beginning that we will protect our employees, we will protect our jobs, and we will protect the company. And everyone is, everything is anchored into that. So whatever we do, we make sure that we are protecting and we are supporting not just our employees, but also our customers and uh, the customers of our customers. So one, one uh, example is making sure that leadership is on top of that, leadership is aligned and attuned to that. The second thing which uh, Shri has mentioned is making sure that your employees are actually already attuned into that uh, same mission and vision that you have. So it's easier to implement no matter uh, what the age group or no matter what the tech savviness of a specific group, it is important that they know what the technology is going to do with them. Additionally, um, there is also a need for the internal IT to be composable. Composable would mean that it should you should be able to adapt to new technologies at a specific time. So um, not just RPAs, because in, in the mindset of people, when you implement RPAs automatically, it would change uh, from an FTE, from a full-time employee to a robot, so to, our, to an RPA. So people would think that, okay, whenever you implement a technology, you immediately slash out jobs. So there is a need for leadership as well to make sure that these changes in technology is not just applicable or not just accepted by the IT team, but also by the, by the mass or by the employees themselves. In this landscape that I am talking about, when we started with everything else, uh, we made sure that our data center, which 
originally was on-premise, we moved into cloud so that we are able to expand immediately. We are able to, um, to, to downsize immediately if we are not needing any. And we are also able to input innovation hubs because we can immediately run a test or a pilot for a specific technology, which allowed us to not just uh, focus on one specific technology, but broaden our perspectives for what RPAs are there, what chatbots are there. Right now, we are in the midst of uh, developing our own chatbot. And our goal is not just a chatbot for ordering, but also a chatbot that would replace eventually uh, some repetitive tasks that we hope in the future would automatically be managed by this. So I think it's, an, it's, a, it's a mix of leadership engagement people, employee engagement, and also IT being ready from the back end to run all these things at the same time when needed. Thank you so much. Definitely it's a very complicated process. And, and then for major, for any major technology deployment, I think transparency and stakeholder buy-in is very important. And, and then for technology with AI, machine learning that potentially can replace people, uh, having, having a good career plan where people may potentially you know, cross skill up skill and do other tasks. That's that's also very important. And you yep. totally agree. Pranja, uh, pro, uh, uh, how has um, you have any best practices to share with us uh, in terms of AI deployment? Yeah, for AI side, as I mentioned earlier, in insurance, uh, there are lots of data which we have, and insurance business is mainly uh, based on the risk analysis, correct? So there are there are lots of opportunity which are where we have uh, uh, where AI is helping us at this point of time in Alliance Indonesia, we try to understand the the pain point of our customers specifically on the health insurance side. Correct. If anyone take insurance, uh, the motive of that insurance is obviously whenever I need uh, uh, insurance company to pay my claim, they should come up and pay my claim as early as possible, and that was the pain area. Correct. So although there is a very less percentage of risk involved, which actually was delaying the entire process. So the customer who was genuine customer who had a genuine claim, they are also judged into the same parameter. So earlier we used to have a, a static rules, which being applied for all of the customers. So although we said, okay, these are, this has, this process has been optimized or this is giving an auto decision, but that also is limited to that parameter, which we have set up. Now, in terms of AI, when we introduced AI specifically on the fraud side, so we, we try to uh, uh, address the issue which we are facing on the fraud side, correct? because that was the only uh, road blocker which we had to make our decision faster. So we try to implement AI where we had lots of data in our uh, past experience. We try to see what kind of pattern generally coming from, from this uh, fraud. There are specific areas, there are certain certain uh, kind of uh, activities which has been classified as a fraud as per the proven practice by our data. So, so that's what we try to build uh, as, a, as a rule. Uh, and and we, we try to use the, the data model, uh, which has a much machine learning capability. But as uh, other uh, speaker also have mentioned, correct, these activity uh, cannot replace human. So now the, the paradigm has changed. The way we work earlier and the way or the need which we have from the uh, manpower side it has been changed because for machine learning also we have to define those rules which which should be able to help us to automate and make these things work as per our need so so we try to implement this uh, uh, ai tool for our claim auto adjudication so we had built rule which are providing the claim decision also taking care of the fraud activity uh, kind of thing. So it's a comprehensive rules which we have built in uh, with help of AI and machine learning. The earlier practice when we uh, before uh, implementing AI was generally we were taking around four to five days to to settle a claim if it is a clean kind of claim and uh, with, with lesser amount. But nowadays our target is that we need to disburse our claim within 24 hours of the claim when we receive and we are able to achieve that. So uh, at this point of time, uh, I, I can proudly say around 30 plus percentage of claim are being paid on same day, which was at some point of time, we could not able to think about uh, this kind of uh, activity and achievement. So, so uh, the AI also 
uh, we are trying to leverage the AI in terms of the underwriting, correct? So as I mentioned earlier, the insurance product were made for some specific kind of uh, uh, rules or some very generic kind of rule, correct? So there is a standard rule has been set up for everyone. Now with the help of AI, we have lots of opportunity to offer a customized product for our customers, correct? So same risks cannot be exposed to everyone, correct? So if you are living into area A, which has been defined as a risk prone area, you cannot be charged for that area itself. It need to be looked certain other parameters. So those data pan, uh, uh, parameters were ignored earlier. Obviously, uh, we didn't have technology to try to find out those things. So now in this current situation where we are trying to leverage this technology and offering and trying to offer the customers a customized product as per his need and whenever he need. So that is now we are trying to offer to our customers to increase the customer experience. Great, super, sounds exciting. It's a lot of benefit to your customers, faster uh, faster, faster response time and, and probably more precise as well with uh, AI machine learning. Sergey, uh, you have something, some best practice to share. You shared some earlier, you, uh, you have more. Uh, you, you yeah. mentioned some of the mistakes people made. Uh, how could they avoid these mistakes? Uh, basically, I wanted to share with you um, an, an interesting sample how we implemented different technologies. Basically, that was uh, machine learning, chatbot, and a little bit uh, RPA. We had a client, we have a client, that uh, during pandemic, their business shift to digital, uh, totally to digital, their uh, their physical places were closed and uh, before that most of their clients were adults uh, people uh, with like 30 plus 40 plus mainly people that interacted with their business and uh, during pandemic uh, they created digital suit which was a uh, little bit fresh and uh, not completed and what they realized is that only young people uh, were using it because they got used to chat to Siri, to Cortana, to others, they, they are okay if they chat with robot and this robot sometimes sounds very correct, some, sometimes not. And their biggest challenge was that uh, their business uh, almost was losing uh, clients that they got used to have. Adults uh, that are not very efficient in technologies. So they came to us and, and say, guys, we have a big problem. We need to return our clients back because right now uh, they put metrics, they put KPIs and uh, statistic was that 70 plus, uh, 70 plus uh, percent of users were millennials and young people. And after we implemented chatbot, after we added more things to their digital suits, we shift it to 60 plus people 48 uh, for 40 age uh, 40 plus age and only 30 young people and it doesn't mean that young pe people number decreased it it remains the same and grow but we add much more added much more uh, people that got used to use uh, physical uh, places of of our client so technologies if you implement them correctly if you use correct uh, algorithms if you chat if you configure your chatbots correctly you can bring even clients that never used technology to buy uh, or to, to to interact with your business but as i mentioned at the beginning you should be careful and you should know how to how to do that so uh, our technology our solution saved uh, business of client uh, during pandemic and then uh, now it was again opening again closing in that country it, it is uh, great britain but uh, their business remains the same so they don't feel it anymore because uh, okay if stores are open yes we can interact with customer in usual if they are closed we have digital suits that satisfies all the ages all the clients and they know how to interact with our with our system and even so if both uh, stores are open and we uh, we work uh, digital uh, in uh, virtual uh, yeah we have even more so i 
I would say that all these technologies, it is something amazing that, can, that we can make now uh, to make customer experience better and uh, to bring more clients to, to grow business. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that's a very good point. Your know, AI not only improve customer experience, can actually bring you more customers than, than before because it's more appealing and more fun. Okay. Wow. Uh, time flies while we're having fun. We're close to the end of our uh, panel time. So uh, before we close, let me ask each of the panel members to give two or three words, a piece of advice for AI success in, in customer experience. Just in two or three words, what would be in terms of your, your advice to, to people? Okay, uh, Sergey, let's continue with you. You have two words or three words? So I recommend only to use these technologies, otherwise uh, you, you are out of business. Okay, so must use AI. <laughs> Winnie, what's your two or three words of advice? AI? AI. Oh, uh, Sergey, okay, you want, you want uh, yes, please. Yeah, I, I yeah, something it, Okay, AI, uh, in terms of AI as well, uh, AI is a great instrument that, uh, that, helps, uh, that helps us uh, to, to behave well in all this uh, huge digital world that we built, so. Okay, thank you so much. How about Winnie? You have two or three words of advice. Okay, three advice would, would be a simplified technology landscape. Yes, oh, that's very good, very good. Uh, Sayafri, two words Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I think, I think for me, it's um, like implementing an app for check is a journey, basically. So okay. uh, it took some time to get it right. In our case, it took a couple of years to get it right, actually. So, uh, and sometimes the most challenging thing is not the technology itself, but the buy-ins uh, basically uh, from the stakeholder because the executive levels, they need to trust this because it's a long-term investment. So okay. make sure get, that get, yes. That get, get stakeholder um, buy-in. Okay. Exactly. And then, yeah, before okay. starting the journey. Thanks. Franja, what's your two or three words of advice? Yeah. So key to enhance the customer experience. So if we need to keep, uh, take our customer experience to the next level, we have to adopt AI. Adopt AI, okay. We're, uh, okay, uh, so a word of support for AI. Sri, what's your two or three words of advice? Uh, customer first, technology customer. can come later. Yes, customers always first. Totally agree. Okay, I think our time's up. I'd like to sincerely thank all the panel members for your precious time and, and most importantly, your valuable uh, sharing and the audience for participating. So um, until next time, bye. Have fun. Have uh, a, a nice rest of the day. See y'all. Have fun. Safe, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you, Andy. Thank you, Sergey, Vinny, Prancho. Thank you, Sri.